What is going on YouTube? Levi Adams here with Team TC, and there are 809 Pokemon in the Pokemon franchise. Every single one of them is someone's favorite, so I wanted to ask the question, how do they stack up in the Pokemon TCG? Today we're going to be continuing our look at every single Pokemon, and how they stack up in the standard and expanded metagames. Welcome back to Dex Dex. You guys heard the intro, welcome back to Dex Dex. Today we're going to be taking a look at everybody's favorite water turtle Pokemon, Blastoise. And Blastoise has some very interesting options we can take a look at in the Pokemon TCG. Starting off with the standard format, as always, we have a couple of options we can use here that combo very, very well together. Blastoise GX has an ability that reduces damage by 30, essentially making it a 270 HP tank. And on top of this tank ability, has an awesome attack for two water energy, does 60 damage times the amount of water energy you shuffle from your field into your deck. This attack combos incredibly well with the non-GX Blastoise from Team Up, which for uh, at once during your turn, you can look at the top six cards of your deck, and for every water energy you find there, you can attach those water energy to anywhere on your board in whatever way you like. This attack or er, this ability is essentially what powers our attack up to do what can be potentially infinite damage, and they combo incredibly well together. This deck has a lot of strengths. The fact that you are your own energy acceleration as well as hit water weakness are very, very strong. Being able to accelerate energy to do these powerful attacks and hit strong Pokemon like Reshiram and Charizard and Blacephalon GX for, a, uh, for weakness damage gives you a very favorable matchup against a majority of the metagame. You are searchable, at least the GX's, via Cherish Ball, which is always a nice plus. You have high HP and awkward numbers of HP 160, as well as 270 are two numbers that are very hard for a lot of decks to hit, depending on uh, what type of deck it is. For example, Picaram needs some damage boosters in order to hit 160 on your non-GX Blastoise and everything needs damage boosters to try and hit 270, which is awesome. You hit an awesome damage interval of 60 times, helping you hit KOs that you would otherwise miss if you were doing something, say, 50 times or 40 times. And not only that, you pair well with colorless attackers, which is just a nice ability to have. The fact that you can accelerate energy onto other Pokemon, not just Blastoise, is very, very nice. And the fact that your attack shovels energy back into the deck is nice because it pairs well with the non-GX Blastoise's ability to accelerate energy from the deck. This being said, you do have a fair amount of weaknesses. You are incredibly slow, being two stage two Pokemon set up from the same basic. You're very prone to getting knocked out, and if you do get knocked out, then your entire strategy is uh, essentially null and void, and you gotta play around it. Which is very, very tough to recover from. Your energy acceleration is not very reliable, which is very, very unfortunate, and shoveling the energy back into the deck makes it hard for you to set up in the late game, hard to recover in the late game, as well as the fact that it stops you from hitting draw cards, search cards, whatever you may need to try and continue your setup. You might just draw into energy, which sucks. This being said, we have another Blastoise we can take a look at if we move on over to the expanded format. That is Blastoise from Boundaries Crossed, I believe, with the ability Deluge. This card lets you attach as many water energy from your hand as you like to one or any of your Pokemon with an attack that we really don't need to look at. Uh, this Blastoise is incredibly strong mainly because we have a card in the expanded format called Archie's Ace in the Hole. I know it says Hidden Ball Trick there, but that's because there's another card I was getting it confused with. Ignore Hidden Ball Trick. It's Archie's Ace in the Hole. Uh, Archie's Ace in the Hole, if it's the last card in your hand, allows you to 
put a water Pokemon from your discard pile onto the bench and then draw five cards. This combos incredibly well with Blastoise. Essentially, you get your Blastoise in the discard and then you use Archies and then bada bing bada boom, you skip Squirtle, you skip Rare Candy, you skip War Turtle, you skip everything that makes the fact that you're a stage two obnoxious and you just have your Blastoise on the bench, which is awesome. You have decent HP at 140, not as good as 160, definitely not as good as 270, but 140 will do. You're an awesome form of energy acceleration, meaning if you have the energy in hand, you have the energy to accelerate, which is amazing. Searchable via Dive Ball. Dive Ball is a card that is essentially Cherish Ball, but for any water type Pokemon, which is really, really good and really, really strong. We don't take advantage of it in our deck, and that's kind of because the deck that we use doesn't really need it, but it's just something to keep in mind. Weaknesses of the deck, uh, not very many, but one that is very, very relevant, and that is the fact that your Blastoise is a sitting duck. Uh, with an attack that doesn't really do much and a high retreat cost, if your Blastoise gets dragged into the active and left there, that gives your opponent an opportunity to set up. And if your Blastoise gets dragged into the active and knocked out, then that makes it awful for you because then you have to you have to use all of your resources to try and set up a new one, which can be very very difficult. Considering while it's relatively easy to do, getting your hand down to one and that one being Archie's Ace in the hole can be very difficult if you're not constantly trying to do it. Unfortunately, the deck we use is set up to do it very, very well, but we'll get into that in a little bit. With that, let's go ahead and take a look at our deck list today. Starting off with our standard deck list, taking a sort of similar build to the Charizard build we had last week, using Pidgeotto as a form of draw power, as well as several other draw and search cards. I would definitely change a couple things about this deck. Primarily taking out Wake and an Energy, probably, to put a Keldeo GX or two into the deck. Uh, Keldeo GX is, would just be a nice stall Pokemon in this deck, as well as comboing well with the non-GX Blastoise as a secondary attacker and a secondary tar uh, target for Cherish Ball. Otherwise, this deck is pretty win, lo uh, win hard, lose hard. Uh, you either win incredibly well or you lose... Uh, very quickly. So quick games, fun games. It's a fun deck. I have a very special place in my heart for Blastoise GX. I took it to the Intercontinental Championships this year, uh, this past year with uh, Izzy and we both played it. We didn't do terribly well, but we had a good time and that's kind of what counts for me personally. Probably the most interesting card in this deck is the Tapu Fini. It has an attack for three energy that is for one energy if your opponent has any ultra piece in play it does 100 damage takes knockouts on poipole takes a knockout on blacephalon gx and if you're playing a blacephalon gx deck and your opponent has ultra beasts and a heatran in play then you're knocking out heatrans too it's an easy one prize attacker that can take very easy two prizes as well as do chip damage to some other pokemon like Nagadel gx which is very very nice Overall, this deck is uh, very interesting, very fun. I recommend trying it out. Now, taking a look at the expanded deck, this is the Archie Stories deck list. I gotta give a shout out to Azul TCG. He used this deck to, uh, I believe that's his name, something like that. I think it's Azul. Uh, he used this deck to place second place at the North Carolina uh, Regional Championships in the 2018-2019 season. And I kind of just tweaked his list up a little bit. Uh, to explain some of the cards, you're playing Execute because it has an ability that if it's in the discard pile, you can put it into your hand. You play two because this essentially makes your Ultra Balls free, it makes your Computer Search free, it makes your Super Energy Retrieval free, because the discard two means nothing when you have two Pokemon you can put into your hand and then discard again. And as long as it goes from your hand to the discard pile, that means that you can put those back, like you can keep on propagating every single turn. Every single time that the executes hit the discard pile, the ability refreshes, which is amazing. Marshadow, Lele, and Shaman are for draw support. Snorlax is a tech against Zoroark decks. The Lapras is a tech of my own. 
Primarily for Night March, you, for one energy, hit 10 damage plus 30 for every one or energy attached. So you're hitting 40, so against Joltix, it's just a nice pinch attacker uh, where you automatically hit 40 damage, which is nice. It's something for the early game. It's just very, very strong. As well as Confusion being, you know, it's a coin flip. It messes with your opponent. Could help you out, for sure. The Articuno is very, very cool with an Ancient trait that lets you take an extra prize. It's another tech against Night March, specifically, uh, allowing you to take two prizes against their single prize attackers, which is very, very fun. Waylord is cool, allowing you to take some uh, nice spread damage KOs. Volcanium Prism Star is also very cool. One second, I think I had sneeze. False alarm, we're good. So Volcanion, uh, you discard a water energy from your hand and then can force your opponent to switch a Pokemon from their bench into their active. They get the choice, but it's fine. Blastoise GX is in here. Azul had a Kingdra GX. I chose Blastoise because it's a Blastoise video. You can put Kingdra in there if you're fine with Blastoise just being in the support role, but this is in case you want Blastoise to be in the attacking role. You can use Archie's Ace in the hole to get this Blastoise onto the port, which is very, very nice. The trainer counts are solid. I like them. I wouldn't change them at all. Maybe take out a field blur for something, but I think field blur is very, very strong, especially in the Garbodor matchup. As a very ability reliant deck, you want to be able to get rid of those float stones or whatever tool is attached to Garbodor so that you get your abilities back. The supporter counts, uh, in case you're wondering about the bottom four, uh, we have 10 water energy. One Choice Band, one Tate and Liza, and one Professor Sycamore. I think that they're good counts. Definitely test it out for yourself. See how you like it. This deck is super duper fun, super duper good, uh, which is very, very important. I mean, having fun is one thing, but being a strong, reliable deck is another. And this deck is both of those things. The last deck is one that I call Smash Toys. And it relies on a similar principle that Archie Stoys does. It's uh, just more geared towards setting up Blastoise, specifically with rare candies as well as Squirtles. Not tech attackers, not really that many tech attackers. And just, you know, it's less consistent, but more Blastoise. <laughs> so it's up to you whether or not you think that's fun. I think that this deck is interesting, I just don't think that it's uh, as good as the Archie Stories list is, mainly because Blastoise shuffling the energy back into the deck is not good and expanded, but we'll get into that once we get into the deck reviews, which is right now. So, rating each of these decks uh, with standard 3 out of 7, that's a high rating in my opinion. It's maybe like a 2 or a 1. <laughs> it's just way too slow. And even though it counters a lot of fire type Pokemon, uh, the fact that you don't have the speed to really counter them is kind of where the weakness lies. Uh, with Archie's Toys, 7 out of 7, awesome deck, awesome speed, awesome power, super fun. Archie's is, I thought it would be a lot harder to use, but I literally played one game with this deck and got the hang of it immediately. I don't want to call it brain dead because it's not but it's a relatively straightforward strategy that allows you to operate at your pace and kind of do what you want to do. You set up and don't really care about what your opponent does because your deck has the consistency to do that, which is awesome. Smash Toys, again, three out of seven. It operates the same way that Archie's Toys does, kind of, <laughs> but you are much slower to set up than Archie's Toys is, and shuffling the energy back into the deck makes you not only prone to ends, but also it doesn't combo well because you're trying to get your energy out of the discard pile with Archie's Toys, and putting them back in the deck kind of stops that. And the fact that you don't have a lot of draw supporters means that you can't draw through your deck to get to your energy that you need to get to. Granted, you could just play it with the Team Up Blastoise instead of the Deluge Blastoise, and that could solve all of your problems. Uh, and you can feel free to do that. That would probably be a better way to do it, honestly. But with the Deluge Blastoise, 3 out of 7, and again, probably bump that down to a 2, actually. But with all this being said, let's go ahead and get into the games, and I can show you just how these decks operate. 
So getting into the first game, we're going to be going into the standard format as per usual. And today we have a game against Shintaro Ito's Blacephalon Naganadel deck, which is uh, very, very interesting. You're going to be able to see how this deck stacks up against one of the strongest decks in the format. Our opening hand is fairly strong here, depending on what we draw into, as we do have the Professor Allen's Lecture to thin our deck to get some Squirtles and some Pidgeys out and another one for the next turn, allowing us to search for some Pidgeotos and whatever else we may need. We use our Judge Whistles and hit two energy, unfortunately. We're just going to try and pull some bubble shenanigans, try and paralyze our opponent while doing 20 damage because of weakness, which is relatively nice and actually comes into play later on in the game. Our opponent is continuing their setup, just kind of <clears throat> doing what they do best and <laughs> being good and being strong. This is why this deck got second place. Our opponent takes a knockout on our Squirtle, taking the first prize of the game as we are going to be able to search our deck for some Pidgeotos and just try and get set up here. We're going to use our airmail to search some stuff out. We hit Cherish Ball, which is going to allow us to evolve into a Blastoise GX eventually, should we choose to, uh, which I believe we do this turn after benching the Tapu Fini. Just kind of getting stuff out of our hands in case we get judged or anything. I don't think this deck plays judge, but you know. Uh, we have the top of fitting on the bench, which is a threat for our opponent. Our opponent is, either needs to take it out or get taken out, and they're going to opt to take it out. This is going to force them to loss them another three energy, however, kind of putting them in a weird position, in my personal opinion. Taking out the top of Finney is good. They get that threat out of the way, and there's no really good way for me to recover it. So, again, very nice play on my opponent's part. I'm just kind of checking how many energy they have in the discard in the lost zone because I'm thinking they don't really have some solid ways to KO me. We're able to use our air mail to hit a Cynthia here and another one to hit Pokemon Communications. I'm thinking, what can I do with this? And nothing really outside of just Cynthia. -ing. And unfortunately, our hand is not really that usable. I consider evolving into the War Turtle for a little bit. But I think I'm just going to attach to the bench and bubble to put our opponent at 60 total damage on that Blitzeth one there. And unfortunately, I miss Paralysis. If I hit Paralysis, it would have given me another turn to set up. Everything would have been awesome. But, you know, you just don't always get it. Our opponent makes a very strange play and decides to Custom Catcher our Pidgeotto. And while that does hinder our setup a little bit, I think taking out the Squirtle would have been the better play. Just because I don't have another Squirtle to get down. So that means I just have Blastoise GX, and this, uh, taking out the Pidgeotto gives me the potential setup to get another Blastoise. We're going to go ahead and take the Rare Candy here, just kind of keep that energy in deck. And we're going to shuffle one back in, and after all those bubbles, we shuffle one energy to hit 120 and take out that Blastoise. Our opponent's popping off with some Beast Rings right here. Again, they make a questionable play and decide to attack the active with Nakan Adele's attack, doing 140 damage, softening up Blastoise for another attack, sure, but I really don't think that, that was that important to do, but what do I know? I don't play this deck that much. We are able to set up a Blastoise on the bench, as well as hit a Squirtle off of our prizes, kind of just continuing our setup a little bit. We need to hit 2 energy in order to knock out this Noggin Adele, as we do. And we are able to air mail and just kind of continue our setup. Just keep on doing what Blastoise wants to do, for sure. We're able to take another 2 prizes after knocking out that Noggin Adele GX. As our opponent does promote the Heatran. Now they're going to be able to reset stamp us. And they're going to be able to take a knockout on our Blastoise GX this turn. And we need to hit 3 energy in order to win with our Blastoise. Now you see I judge his whistle and I get an energy. I air mail and there's 2 energy. I could have had game this turn, but I didn't and that's a bummer. So we hit 1 energy and I'm thinking, oh no, I'm going to lose. But our opponent makes the hasty mistake of going for a hot burn GX here to only do 100 damage, thinking that Beast Energy gives them the boost. But it doesn't, and we're able to take the win there with our non-GX Blast Toys. After a lucky game in Standard, we move on to a not-so-lucky start in Expanded using the Archie Toys deck. 
as we start out with our execute and I'm trying to think is there a way for me to set up our RGJs in the hole this turn after realizing that there's not really much of a way we're just going to go ahead and try and thin down our deck as much as possible kind of setting some stuff that we don't want to draw into to the discard pile as well as just kind of trying to draw as much as possible as aggressively as possible we can go ahead and set up the silent lab just kind of negating their basic abilities stopping slowing down our opponent's setup a little bit our opponent is going to be able to horror house gx us this turn stopping us from using any training cards during the next turn it's not really going to be that eventful uh, with our execute in the active though i'm kind of really not worried about much i'm okay with not having the setup this turn because with the way our hand is looking now we're actually uh, looking like we're going to be able to set up our archie's ace in the hole for this turn and hopefully get something rocking and rolling here our opponent does play the lavender town down perfectly fine by me we just promote the shaman to the active we hit a battle compressor which is great able to send some more stuff to the discard pile our second execute setting us up for propagation plays later on in the game as well as fisherman and another energy just some more stuff that we don't really want to draw into we're able to ultra ball and i opt to get the magic harp waylord just because using the gx attack will be nice to take knockouts on these low hp and non-gx pokemon and we are able to get some energy acceleration going we're going to use our super energy retrieval in order to get some energy out of the discard pile we're going to attach a couple energy to our shaman so that we can sky return putting the gengar mimikyu in range of a choice band boosted super splash from our magic harp waylord as well as getting our shaman back into our hand for potential draw plays later on our opponent does Guzma, however, and take a knockout on our Blastoise, which proves problematic for me because that means my energy acceleration is gone. We are able to Trainer Mail, and we're going to fail the Trainer Mail because I realize that we'll be able to get off the Archie's Ace in the hole so long as I don't use Shaman's ability. So we search our deck for our second Archie's, and then we're able to use it to get Blastoise on the board and hit some stuff that we definitely need. We're going to be able to use Super Energy Retrieval. I misplay here and don't propagate with our, exe uh, with our Execute. Uh, I definitely should have. It doesn't affect the game too, too much, but it just would have given me more resources later on. And we are able to use our Towering Splash GX here to take three prizes by knocking out the Malamar, the Trubbish, and the Sudowoodo, which is very, very nice. Opponent just has Marshadow in the active and the Garbodor on the bench. And our opponent makes a questionable play this turn, Guzmang, our uh, Lele on the bench. In order to take two prizes, I definitely think they should have gone for the Blastoise, mainly because while I know that I can get Archie's Ace in the hole off again if I need to, uh, our opponent doesn't really know that. So they just go for the top of Lele, get that guaranteed damage, which is fine. And we have our uh, Waylord in the active, primarily because if we do this, then we're going to be able to set up our Volcanion in order to take a knockout on the Bench Marshadow as well as the Garbodor using its Sona Blast attack, I believe is what it's called. Use Super Energy Retrieval to get some energy back into our hand, and we're going to take a knockout on this active Marshadow, as I said, and uh, do 20 damage to every single one of our opponent's bench Pokemon, taking a knockout on the Garbodor that took 100 damage from the Super Splash, just using some nice spread damage here to take some neat KOs. We had a Water and Energy and the Lapras off the prizes, meaning that we are 100% out of range of our opponent's Poltergeist attack. So our opponent's going to go ahead and try and set up a second Gengar Mimikyu, hoping that this can just stall us out of game. Luckily, we're going to be able to talk, uh, top deck a Battle Compressor here, though, which is going to allow us to search out our Guzma from our discard pile. Guzma, the NK on the bench, and take a knockout using our Magikarp Waylord tag team. I debate whether or not I want to knock out the Lele or the NK, and I decide NK is more disrespectful, so we go for that.
getting into the last game of the video we have another execute start with our smash toys deck and we're going to be playing against a picaram deck and expanded which i think is kind of interesting especially since the deck seems like it's pretty standard focus in all honesty it's a little bit of a weaker picaram deck but we can honestly be thankful for that because our deck is a weaker archie stories <laughs> and our setup is booty butt cheeks we're going to try and make the most of it. We're going to Tapu Lele for our Tate and Liza this turn. I was hoping to Tapu Lele for N, but I realized I don't play N in the deck, which sucks. So we're going to set up our Tapu Lele and go for a Tate and Liza, hopefully draw and do something good. Unfortunately, we do not, but our opponent is either stuck and can't do anything, or maybe they were AFK and they are going to end up passing the turn back to us which I'm relatively thankful for. It keeps us in the game just a touch longer. With this, I'm kind of thinking, what can we do for next turn? I have the VF Seeker for Tate and Liza. Uh, we draw into the Archie's Ace in the hole, but we're not gonna be able to use it this turn just because we can't empty our hand. And we're trying to get set up for next turn and potentially use an Archie's Ace in the hole. I debate whether or not I want to set up a Shaman, but I just don't want to lose the VS stickers right now. So I choose not to, and I bench Articuno. Send hello to my opponent to see if they're still in the game, which they are as they play N, shuffling both of our hands back into our decks so that we can both draw six. And our opponent gets out of their awful hand, and they're able to take a knockout on Articuno. We're going to promote our Tapu Lele. Probably should have just promoted the execute there, but what are you going to do? As we are going to get a pretty nice setup here, honestly. I believe that through a very roundabout way, we end up setting up our uh, blast toys from the discard pile using our Archie's Ace in the Hole, which is pretty nice. Using some super energy retrievals in a very suboptimal way. Uh, we're going to be able to <laughs> set up our RT stories here. Uh, we're going to use this opportunity to hit this alone Raichu tag team, or the Raichu Raichu tag team rather, with a Sky Return, kind of getting Shaman back into our hands. Similar strategy to what we played in the last game. Just keeping it safe from a knockout, we can promote our Execute, which gets it back into our hand, uh, essentially, for Promulgation plays. <coughs> And we're hoping to set up a Blastoise GX this turn, which we do. We're actually going to hopefully be able to use an Archie's this turn through a crazy turn of events. So we hit Rare Candy as well as Ultra Ball, setting up another Blastoise GX or Blastoise with Deluge from the deck rather. Then we're going to be able to use Archie's Ace in the Hole to draw five cards as well as set up the Blastoise GX in our discard pile, which is very, very nice. We are again, through a very roundabout way, kind of just able to set up our deck in a way that allows us to take a knockout this turn, which is very, very nice, showing the power of Rocket Splash and its ability to take big KOs hitting a nice 300 damage this turn by shoveling some energy back into the deck. Now, our opponent is going to be forced to pass here as all they can do is use their Orangaroo in the active to try and instruct and get a little bit further ahead. We're gonna take a knockout on their Orangaroo. Seeing as there's not much else we can do, we can't Guzma, we can't, uh, we can't Lysander because we don't play it in the deck, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this Fisherman. Just because if we need to, Fisherman is searchable via VS Seeker, which we don't have any left in the deck, but we can hit it off the prizes, as we do. Our opponent's going to end us, and unfortunately here, uh, it's going to end up winning them the game. We try and pull some shenanigans so that they can't just tag bolt for game here, using Super Energy Retrieval and the eggs in our discard pile. We are... Uh, able to retreat our active blast toys so that we have another blast toys in the active but it's not going to be enough unfortunately as our opponent's going to take a knockout on our bench blast toys now 
and we just top deck a water energy, which causes us to lose the game. Unfortunate turn of events, but what can you do? That is going to be the end of our video. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in. Let me know which Blastoise deck you enjoyed the most in the comment, se uh, comment section down below. Next week we're going to be taking a look at one of my personal favorites in Butterfree and seeing how we can make that Pokemon work in Standard and Expanded. It'll be interesting for sure. With that, my name is Levi Adams with Team TC and I will catch you guys next time. Hey everyone, this is Ash Ketchum. Thanks for watching Team TC. Make sure to subscribe and become part of the team and join us on our journey to become Pokemon Masters. <laughs>